Key to diversifying telecom supply chains and critical infrastructure is Open RAN. Virgin Media O2 has announced a new Open RAN deployment in the UK with the hope of bringing the company closer to its multi vendor vision. Joining me to discuss are Alex Boyd, head of Telco Cloud at Virgin Media O2, and Lorcan Burke, director of RAN at VMware. Welcome to you both. Lorcan, I want to start with you. Can you summarize the state of the industry in relation to the move toward cloud native and open RAN? Sure. That, yeah, Clarence, thank, thanks for the question. I, I think um, across across the industry, we've seen uh, lots of transformation towards cloud native for the uh, IT parts of the business. Uh, good progress, as Alex knows, in terms of the core uh, infrastructure parts and service layer, which have been moving towards either common virtualized or cloud native functions over the last couple of years. And then the, the, the last areas that we've been working on have been the uh, really the access domain, where the, uh, the the bulk of highly distributed sites are, and how do we uh, get that open open RAN network on an open cloud native platform. So that's uh, well on its way, and but really just kicking off into live deployments over the last uh, six to nine months. Alex, where is VMO2 on this journey? We've been on this journey for the last eight years, I would say, um, for various VNF platforms. But we, we've consolidated now all of our um, approaches onto a single platform that is able to pivot from the VNF space into the CNF space. And now we're able to reuse and reutilize you know, a lot of that work as we move towards sort of edge and into the ORAN space as well. Um, so that's the the journey we've been on, and how do we introduce the cloud native on top of that? Um, there's obviously still some learnings to do in the, in, the, in as we go forward, but we are able to just leverage all of the pre work that we've done in that, in in our journey. So, Lorcan, what would you say are the key technology strategies driving progress? Well, I I, th I think that the, there's a number of things that at the end of the day, the operational teams in in the mobile operator still need to achieve the. KPIs and performance that they expect to see from traditional RAN vendors. So over the last number of years, we've been working with everyone like NEC in Japan, NTT Docomo on their open RAN tracks, working with uh, DISH in the US on, on how do we really look at uh, deployment of uh, Mavenir architecture across uh, their open RAN infrastructure. And in, in doing that, that the key things end up, end up being how do you look at that continuous requirement flow for, for the RAN team? How do you get into that continuous deployment, continuous integration, and then continuous test? How, how do you really improve the relief cycle? A lot of the time, we've traditionally, in, in as we've been doing radio networks, maybe take one major release a year, some minor releases, and then some patches. As, as we're looking at fee increased feature velocity, we're having to change a little bit the operational processes around that, and then automate a lot of the deployment and delivery and still maintain the KPIs. So a lot, a lot of the technology drive for that is about um, managing those dependencies, and uh, which is really a practice we've been doing in IT and core network for quite a while, and it's relatively new for the for the RAN domain teams. Alex, from your perspective, what do you see as the key technology strategies? It's absolutely, as, as Lorcan's alluded to, it's how do we bring those continuous delivery integration um, to our working practices, which as, as we know in the past have been built around um, one or two releases a year, those kind of release cycles, maybe even longer than that in some instances. Um, so it's about how we shift to those new technology um, enablers like, like Kubernetes and cloud nativeness, that those are the key uh, underpinnings for that. And we need to make sure that we've got a platform that we're confident in operating from, a, from an open platform perspective that we can then lever and layer these things onto. Because if we're not confident about the underlying infrastructure and the underlying models that we use there um, and, and open them up to these new cloud native experiences, we're going to be kind of hamstrung from the beginning. So that's key for me. On the practical side, Alex, how are you approaching this rollout differently from previous processes? We've started with the um, looking at our fundamentals. So what is our key common operating environment? So we're trying to standardize across that piece. We see that if we, we could introduce a, a kind of a delivered solution into this space, but that will tie us into you know, models and methods that we, we don't want to get into. So we're actually falling back onto our, what's our common telco cloud delivery mechanism across the business that we use, you know, what are our key driving practices and operations and all those good things. Um, 
and making sure that we bake those into a, as we mentioned, we're in a, uh, at the beginning of the process. So we're going through various stages of um, analysis around how we take that forward. Um, I, I can't talk too much about some of the stuff because it's, it's quite sensitive, as you can imagine. But uh, that, that's the key bit is to make sure that we've got our usual operating mechanisms and the best practices there baked into the beginning of it. So that when we're talking to, as, as Lorcan said earlier, we're talking to a Mavini or a, an Ericsson or a Nokia or a Altios Star, one of these, one of the big vendors in the space, um, we're all looking at comparing the, the, the relative um, offerings that they've got and how we bring them into our uh, network in the same way um, and we're constructing very very similar solutions based on that those those common um, foundations so Lorcan, looking forward do you see the ran remaining a standalone capability or more of a merging of ran and mech services and why so i i think the interesting thing is if you look at the service demand on, demands on the overall network the the network itself becomes an overall cloud stretched out towards the the, uh, the edge data centers, the uh, the much hyped metaverse components, the uh, the need for augmented reality or content pushed out towards the edge, and Virgin Media is a very powerful content company. That that's, that content needs to get placed further and further out the network. People are looking at the uh, the likes of the RAN as being a, a data center for hosting that that content, down to you know sub hundred site clusters. So those those edge data centers or MEC locations end up being shared for a lot of that RAN workload as well as content. So it it, it really does become a, a, a very highly distributed data center as opposed to the traditional uh, centralized data center infrastructure. And Alex, what do you see moving forward for VMO2? Well, as Lorcan alluded to, you know, we need to start looking at this as a distributed cloud rather than you know the more traditional core data center play that we've had in the past you know we, we've built we're building towards and we have built you know cloud native practices in the core data centers and we need to start pushing those out towards the edge um, as the use cases for OAN come together we need to consolidate those business cases into into one thing so if we're, if we're introducing capability into key sites you know with the hundreds of sites thousands of sites we don't want to go back and do it again we want to be able to in, um, drop multiple use case capability from an infrastructure perspective into those sites and then push set from a central position, push out the services that we need. And, you know, some of that infrastructure will contain uh, accelerator cards, some, you know, and, and specifics, and some of it will just be um, uh, traditional, you know, uh, plain infrastructure that can host multi-purpose. Uh, so that's that's how we see it. If we, I think if we don't do that and we don't start to look at it as a, as a distributed cloud, the VMO2 can actually leverage going forward for multiple use cases when we go, you know, from uh, OAN to MEC to Metaverse to and anything else in between that we've seen in the content caching use cases that were called out. Um, I think that's the, that's the real direction that we need to make sure we do that. Otherwise, things aren't going to really build out in a meaningful sense for the business. It's going to start to get too expensive in that space. So that's the key driver for me. Well, we've heard some very interesting insights and we are looking forward to seeing how all of this develops. Thank you both, Alex and Lorcan, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.